the filmmakers Chris, Josh, Rob, the executive producer Rob. You guys come on up here and uh, let's talk about the film. Thanks a lot, guys. Welcome, welcome. Chris, great job, man. Appreciate you guys coming. Come on over here and have a seat. So what did you guys think about the movie? Thanks. I got to tell you, um, I had these guys on this morning on my radio show, and they were absolutely funny. I love the movie. This is probably one of my favorite movies at the film festival this year. These guys are really, really funny. And uh, the only person I didn't get to meet, sir, is you. Hi, I'm Joe. Welcome aboard. So, guys, let's give it up here for Josh Blacker and Christopher Young here. And you are? Uh, Rob Carswell, executive producer. Executive producer here, guys. All right, before we feel some questions from you guys, I know there's probably a couple of questions you want to um, ask these guys. But first, uh, there's a couple of things here that I wanted to ask him. First of all, I want to talk a little bit about V. L Y. Um, these two guys right here have worked together before. I know uh, Christopher and uh, Josh, you guys have uh, done some short films before in the past and uh, so far. And uh, you guys decided, you know, to start your own company. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Uh, your company here, um, V L Y. What does that stand for? And uh, why did you decide to start your own company? Uh, it stands for viewers like you. We stole it from PBS. Love that. Uh um, they don't technically own it, by the way, so it's yeah. not. Yeah. Well, at least we haven't been sued yet, yeah. so they may in fact own it. <laughs> um, uh, we started the company so that we could uh, make this film and uh, make uh, hopefully other films and uh, television shows and uh, some web, web content. We just we wanted to start off right away by, by doing something that would uh, lay the groundwork for the future. Awesome, man. So uh, just to tell everybody there, the company is based out of Canada. Um, you guys have uh, offices in, uh, is it Vancouver and Toronto? Well, yeah, Vancouver and Toronto. It sounds a lot fancier than it actually is because I live in Vancouver and Chris lives in Toronto right now. There you so. go, offices in Vancouver yeah. and Toronto. Yeah. 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 Our Toronto office might be my bedroom. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that. Do a lot of work in that room. And your living room. Yeah, a little bit. What well, now, um, guys, I want to talk about this. Um, you know, watching the movie, when I watched it, uh, and I don't know if any of you guys got the feel to it, but when I watched it, it was, uh, to me, it reminded me of a lot of those great comedies that came out in the late 80s and early 90s. Yeah. You know, the, I know after I watched the movie with my wife, the first thing she said was that it reminded her of the movie Office Space, which is an awesome film. And uh, so can you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to make Focus, um, were there movies from that era? Is that where you were trying to get like a retro feel to the movie? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, we made it uh, primarily because we wanted to make a movie that was uh, sort of in one, one or two locations, like structurally. But uh, yeah, we love movies. We love Office Space. Uh, we looked at uh, Trading Places, uh, Secret of My Success. Uh, what was the other one we were talking about earlier? Working Girl. Yeah, Working Girl. <laughs> Um, just like 80s John Hughes style uh, kind of workplace comedies and just like yeah, 80s, 80s comedies in general are just terrific. Love Coming to America, it's a great movie. Now there's a rumor going around that you guys are going to remake Working Girl starring Josh here. That's right, yeah. I'm going to be the Sigourney Weaver character. Not happening. Yeah. Not going to happen, all right. He's right, I'll be the Harrison Ford character. Now did any of you guys... Uh, recognize the guy that played the boss at the end of the movie. All right, if you did, he's a great actor, William B. Davis. He was on the X-Files, you know, all the time, smoking man. And I uh, understand that, uh, Josh, you were a big fan of the X-Files. And, and uh, how did you guys get William B. Davis to star in the movie? I was a huge fan of the X-Files. Sunday nights back in the day, that was where you'd find me on my couch watching that. And I moved to Vancouver about nine years ago, so I didn't get a chance to work on the X-Files, and I thought it'd be just terrific when we were casting this. I thought, man, wouldn't it be awesome if we could get William B. Davis, cigarette smoking man from the X-Files, and I thought, why not? So I contacted his agent and said, is he interested? They said, send us the script. I sent him the script. He loved the script, loved the idea, and um, wanted to work with us. He's a big supporter of independent film and uh, of young filmmakers, and... Uh, it was just that easy. We just reached out, and he came and showed up on set and was just an absolute gem of a guy. started a couple of years ago. The, a lot w of what is happening now is that, you know, studios 
are releasing them on demand the same time they go to theaters or in some occasions even before they even hit the theaters. Do you guys look at that as a good thing or a bad thing or what do you think about movies simultaneously being on demand at the same time that they go to theaters? Um, yeah, day and date releases on, on, on demand in the theater. I think it's just uh, the studios just trying to make more and more money uh, as they can. I don't think that that really applies as much to indie filmmakers because we have to hustle so hard just to get into theaters. Most of the money we make is from um, video on demand, pay TV. Uh, if we do get a theatrical release, uh, you generally have to pay. You got to rent out the theater. You got to pay for a, a digital print. Um, and so it, it's an expensive process. Uh, so we try to minimize the cost as best as possible. I just think it's, it's great if the f people can see the film. Um, but that's really a, st a studio uh, type of way of doing things. You know, the big five, right. that's how they do it more. Well, that's what I think is, is good about a movie coming out on demand because for markets this size, there's really, that's the only way you're going to be able to see that kind of a movie and get exposure to films like that.